Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Python shell and how to run some uh, simple commands. So we start Python, um, the, you know, the idle interpreter by either searching for it or using your icon. And if you open the shell, it should look like this. Um, and here we are going to type some basic commands to see how Python interprets um, these commands. So let's start out with some basic numbers. So let's use Python as a calculator. For example, we type 3 plus 4, and it gives us 7. Um, 9 times 6 gives us 54. Uh, now here you can use all your arithmetic operators and order of precedence. So if we do 4 plus 5 within parentheses minus 45, then you get a negative number. So you can try all these different things and see how it works out. Now, what happens when we make some mistakes? So let's try 5 plus, and then open parentheses, 2 times 3. And if I don't have a parentheses, it's still waiting because the command is not complete. So notice it doesn't give me any answer. So if I close the parentheses and hit enter, it says, well, the answer is 11. Um, so let's try some division operations. 15 divided by 5 gives you 3.0. Let's try 15 divided by 4 gives us 3.75. Now, what if we did something like how do we want to find the remainder of an operation? 15 mod 4, which is a percent sign, is called the mod operator says the remainder is 3. So 15 divided by 4 is um, 3 times 4 is 12. 15 minus 12, the remainder happens to be 3. For example, 11 divided by 11 mod 2. 11 divided by 2, the answer is 5.5. But 11 mod 2, the remainder should be 1. So the mod operator can be quite useful for doing some conditional checking as we go through the rest of this term. Now that's with numbers. Now let's try some strings. So if I want to type in hello, notice how I put single quotes around it. If I simply typed in hello, it gives me an error saying hello is not defined. So anytime you want to use a string, you either use single quote or double quote around it to say that that is a string that needs to be displayed. Now, there are several things you can do with a string. For example, I can say um, hello plus world, and it's going to put the two strings together and give me hello world. Now, of course, there's no space in between because I did not put any space. So if we want the space, we say hello space plus world. Again, all within single quote, hello, space. Then there's a plus sign, which is notice outside of the single quote to say that I want to add the two strings together. Um, now, if I want to say something like very hot, then it would look like that. If I wanted to say very, very hot, there are a couple of other things I could do. For example, three times and then the word very plus hot makes it what? Let's see. Very, very, very hot. So there are quite a few string functions that you can use um, that can all be found in the PDF file as to what you can do with strings. This is a concatenate function where you can put together strings. But again, there are several things you can do. Now, um, try things like what happens when you put a number within a single quote and try to add another number. So I did 7 plus 2, which obviously gives me an error message because now the 7 is a string and the 2 is a number, which is not the right thing to do. Whereas if I added 7 plus the 2 also inside single quote, I am going to get 72, whereas we're just trying to put two strings together. So try some of these commands from that PDF file and try to do a few things with strings. Next, let's move on 
to the type function. These are different data types. So far, we have seen numbers, strings. So how do we know what data types these are? So type will tell us what kind of data we are looking at. So if I say type, and within parentheses I put a 9, it says it belongs to the int class. If I type in type and say 1.25, then it belongs to the float class. If I say type, and let's type in hello within single quote, it says it's a string class. Now let's try something. How about a list of items, a list of numbers. So I put the parentheses, then the list is specified inside square brackets. So I have square brackets 1, 2, 3. So I have a list of numbers and it says that class is a list class. For that matter, I could have a list of color, essentially strings, a list of colors, red, green, blue, they all go inside single quote, separated by commas, it's a list, remember, and they are inside square brackets, and then the parentheses for the list, which is for the type, I mean, and so they're all different types of lists. There are several other functions like that, for example, len, which gives us the length of a certain item. If I say len of hello, it tells, gives me the length of the string hello, which is five characters. Now, if I do length and I try to put in a list there, for example, a list of four numbers, it's going to give me the number of items in the list. So as you can see, I can use these functions to see how many items I have in the list. So when I'm going through a list, I can um, use this for iteration and see if I can go through all the items in the list, starting from one through how many ever I have. Now let's move on to variables. So we've seen strings, we've seen numbers. How do we store them? So if I say x, for example, x equals 4, y equals 5, and I can do x plus y, and it prints 9. So I have stored 4 in x and 5 in y. Likewise, I can do length equals length, length equals 5 and width equals 4 and you can do length times width gives us 20. So we can store variables. I can say name equals and name, for example. And if you just say name, it prints out whatever was stored in name. Now, we might want to put a few things together. If we want to do that, we can use the print statement, for example, print. And if I say name within parentheses, it's going to print the same thing, which is whatever is stored in name. Or I could say print. And maybe I can say hello. name, and that prints hello, and then whatever is stored in name. Notice, print hello, comma, name prints it. So you could say, well, print, let's do one more, hello, within single quote, comma, name does not have single quote, notice, because it's a variable, hello, name, then I want to add another couple of exclamation marks, and then I want to say, length equals and comma length. Notice how they're all separated by commas. These are all different tokens and width equals comma width. And so this will put the whole thing together saying hello, whatever is stored in name, Length equals whatever is stored in length and width equals whatever is stored in width. So you can try some of these statements to see how they work and move on to the next video, which will show you how to 
string all of these statements sequentially into what we call a program. So we want to be able to define variables, ask the user for some input, store it in these variables, and calculate whatever we want to calculate. So which is what we will be doing in the next video, how to write a program, save it, and run it. In the meanwhile, the shell is a great place to try some of these commands and see what you can do with them.